sponge project. You know, the world was cranking in high gear. Uh, and back then I was uh, using a, a small plane to jump around different projects I was working on. And Oren called me and said, you need to come to Brewster, Washington and come see this amazing piece of land. So I fly from Idaho, I seem to remember, across the country and I land down at the Anderson Field down here by the river and I'm looking at all this rock on the, the sides of the river and I'm thinking, Oren's lost his mind. They're, they're, why would he call me for this? There's this rock everywhere. Uh, and we drove up and came up onto this plateau up here. And of course, then I instantly got it. There's something like, I think originally Cass told me it's six or 700 acres out here uh, that wasn't really planned for uh, orchards. It was he basically said, here you go, here's six or 700 acres. What can you do with it? Well, of course, as a golf course designer, my chin dropped. I mean, six or 700 acres of beautiful sand with no limitations. A, a, a family who wants to build a golf course, there's no real estate. There's no big hotel out here. There's, there's just golf. That was the pr only motivation. Build an awesome golf course. What would it take? And so that was the premise that I was given by Oren and Cass right at the very start. What would you do again if you had this perfect site and you were starting from from scratch with no limitations. Uh, and so the, the, the challenge is there's no excuses either. You can't blame it on the house developer. You can't blame it on the engineer bringing the road in. You can't blame it on the lack of water or the trees that were in the way or anything. There was nothing, there's no excuses. So if it's crap, it's all my fault. Uh, the, the land is absolutely superb. And, and we, we could have laid it out a thousand different ways. Uh, and in the end, uh, we based our decision on a couple or three different things. There's a huge wash over here that you, you didn't see, and we couldn't really cross it with golf. So we had to stay on that side of it or this side of it. So we stayed over here. And then there's another huge wash further out in the golf course. You're going to cross it twice on the sixth hole and then again on the 14th hole. Uh, and that kind of drove our thinking. In terms of the overall golf course, it's pure sand. It goes all the way down, they tell me. No one can dig a hole this deep, but they tell me it goes all the way down to about the river level, so it just never stops. Uh, in the five years that I've been out here, I've never seen a puddle or even anything like a puddle. We've had irrigation uh, breakages while we were building the golf course with you know main pipes blowing and water just pouring out. No puddles. The water just disappears. The climate here is extremely temperate you know it gets a little warm in the absolute peak of the summer but a lot of the time it's beautiful it's like this so the grasses we used are the same fescue grasses that i used at bandon all those years ago we purposely used these grasses so that we would maintain that hard fast playing condition and the golf course is designed entirely for it there's lots of slopes there's lots of pushing the ball around and if you can read those contours you can use them to your advantage there's a lot of grass out here. There's over a hundred acres. Chip over here is the superintendent. I think he told me there's like 500 acres, but I know there's only a hundred <laughs> acres. He tells me there's more than that. There's about 110 or so, Chip. Something like that. There's a lot of grass out there. Bandon Dunes is almost exactly the same amount of grass. So those of you that have played Bandon and stand on those giant wide fairways, looking down them, that's what you're gonna see today. The same huge wide fairways. The, the mission that I gave myself uh, was to build a golf course just as playable as Bandon. I wanted uh, average golfers and maybe golfers that are occasional golfers to come out here, never lose a golf ball. We did everything we possibly could to make sure that losing a golf ball is hard to do. You may shoot 100, but you're going to do it with the same wore out golf ball you started with. <laughs> Uh, we wanted to make sure that a good golfer can be on the attack. You know, I've, I've built right at the end of that sort of economic boom when everybody was talking about defending par and resistance to scoring and levels of difficulty. I got sucked into that uh, romance as well. And I built a couple of courses that were difficult. I get to play one of them in Bend quite a lot. It's my home course. Uh, when I came here, I could see that that was... That took some of the fun and enjoyment out of the game. What I wanted to do here was put it back in and have the average golfer have a great time and want to play over and over and over again. I wanted the good golfer to stand there and see opportunity. 
uh, to be hopeful, enthusiastic, to, to know that they can be aggressive without getting completely penalized. Uh, and you guys are going to be the very first ones to see it. Nobody else has seen this yet. Nobody that isn't tightly involved with our group. Uh, and we really wanted the, the local golf writers to be able to see it first. It's really, really early. The last few holes, this range was only seated a few weeks ago. The 18th green was seated, was it maybe six weeks ago, Casey? Something like that, maybe eight weeks ago, not long. So you're gonna be putting on greens that are six to nine months away from being ready. So you have to cut us a, a good amount of slack. We're hoping that you can see past the, the young grass in a lot of the spots. You know, if you're inside a putter, I would give it to you uh, because the greens are still pretty young but hopefully you'll get the overall feel of it. Uh, the golf course, you know, we, we sweated over the cart decision. It's warm here in the summer, so we decided that carts were really a necessity, but you, you could walk it. It's set up to walk. If you're fit enough to walk and it's a cool day like today, there's certainly no impediments to it. There's no big traverses to make, no big hills, no big long distances from green to tee. Everything's really close. Uh, there's no cart paths particularly. There, there's a few trails here and there to put the carts on, but generally you're driving the carts on the grass. You're driving right up to the next tee a lot of the time, pulling your clubs and just teeing off and taking off in the cart again. From a usability point of view, we wanted it to be like the antithesis of a, of a stuffy club. We wanted it to be super easy to use. You know, I just came from Bandon where you know you have to get on a shuttle to get to this next spot and then a shuttle to go back to that restaurant i mean it's a great place but i don't want to have to do that when i'm playing golf i want to be able to get out of the bar right there and take 10 steps onto the range and start hitting drivers i want to be able to take another 20 steps and start putting or just come over here and start chipping and then step right on the first tee the clubhouse that's being conceived is big roller doors with open bar you're sitting right on a bar stool turning around and your buddy's hitting balls right there. You know, it's it's hopefully as easy to use as a golf club could ever possibly be. Uh, and the golf court, the clubhouse should be done by the middle of next summer. And when you guys come back, you'll see it all in its, its glory. So I don't want to take up too much time right now, but hopefully that gives you an insight into what you're going to see and experience. And hopefully you'll be in as, as enthusiastic as I am. No, that's not possible. Uh, and uh, we'll have lots of questions tonight when you've played it for the first time. So I, I think, David, I think you, you expressed really well about the operations. And uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, with OB Sports, and uh, we're going to be the management entity here once uh, the golf course opens. And uh, we plan on providing a, an atmosphere just like David has described. And we didn't think of this. This was a group decision between the ownership, between the, the designer and the management group. We're all one team here. And... Uh, in, in talking about the experience that we wanted people to have here on this golf course, we want it to be exactly what he said. We want it to be easy to use. We don't. We want the service to be fabulous. We want the food to be fabulous. We want everything to be at the highest possible level, but we want it to be easy. We want it to be relaxed. And the last thing we want is stuffy. Uh, I'm not a stuffy person, and I think we fit pretty well into that particular program ourselves. So our employees will be extremely well trained, and... Uh, um, I think we're going to have a, a great time here. The key for us is to get people to this site. And I think once we get people here, they're going to come back over and over again and tell their friends about it. This is going to be a relatively low volume golf course. Uh, as, as we had talked about Chambers Bay, which is, of course, let's say conceptually, at least with the grassing plan and so forth, similar. It's a, it's a link style golf course. Um, they're running about 40, 45,000 rounds of golf there. We're going to be running at, at our peak around 20 in the low 20s, which will not allow for the wear and tear on the fescue grasses that we get on, on projects that are very, very busy. And we can, we can make it at that particular level here. So that's where we want to be. Uh, you kind of know a little bit about who we, you know, we are, and you tell us if we're headed in the right direction. And please, we will not feel bad at any criticism you have, questions you have, Ask the real questions because we still have time to, to fix anything that, that needs to be fixed before we allow the real players in here. So, oh, one more thing for those is everybody coming back in the morning. Uh, we have a, a, a fella coming in in the morning uh, to play with us uh, who is a PGA Tour player. His name is Kevin Chappell. 
Kevin was the 43rd leading money winner this year on the PGA Tour, and he just missed the top 30, which is playing today in Atlanta. And I watched him play last week in Chicago, and he is uh, excited to come out here and to, to have a chance to see the golf course. So I've invited him to come out in the morning and to play with us. So um, it'll be kind of fun. I don't know how it'll go, but maybe you can watch him hit some balls. Maybe he has some tips on how to hit off of these tighter lies that you're going to notice that you get on, on fescue grass and maybe what, you, what you're used to. But it's going to be really a lot of fun. And if you have any questions for him, He's about as casual, as good a guy as you can imagine. He's also becoming a, a resident of the state of Washington. He's marrying a Seattle girl uh, next week in, in Lake Chelan, and he's going to be living now in Seattle and uh, Scottsdale in the winter. So he'll be uh, a, a representative here of, of the Gamble Sands Golf Course on the PGA Tour. That's kind of cool. So that he'll be in in the morning. So uh, that's about it. So the 